The Timber Framed Tradition Introduction The earliest known timber buildings are circular shelters, which were built of pine poles and mammoth bones in the Ukraine around 14,000 BC. Around 2,500 BC, the first rectangular buildings began to appear, but these early buildings generally used round timbers just lashed together and so quickly decayed. What are timber-framed buildings? Timber-framed buildings are defined here as those constructed using squared timbers that have been jointed and pegged together. In England, carpenters constructed these buildings as a series of frames, the cross frame, wall frame and the roof frame. Timber-framed buildings may generally be categorised into three types according to their cross frames. Aisle framed, vertical wall posts supporting a triangular roof frame but with added lean-to on each side. Box framed, Vertical wall posts supporting a triangular roof frame. Crack framed. Two curved timbers connected with a tie beam to form the letter A. The walls were commonly formed by infilling with wattle and daub. Typically, oak staves were slotted vertically 30 to 40 centimetres apart, with hazel or cleft oak wattles horizontally woven between, leaving the timbers exposed. Different mixtures of clay, dung, straw or hair were mixed and daubed on both sides of the wattle. In England, it is mostly oak timber-framed buildings that survived because oak resists weathering so well. However, other tree species, such as elm, were also used. Timber-framed buildings were very popular because it was a cheap material. In certain areas, you have stone, they will use stone. Where you've got timber, um, which grows all over, it's readily available and if you're using local there's no transport costs and things so that's why most of the, the timbers were local to the buildings. So tree ring analysis confirms that it was used locally, it also confirms that they built green which means you fell the tree, you convert it and straight away literally within a year it would go up. If you imagine you let it season, it goes hard, it takes a lot longer um, and the, the price goes up again, so it all comes back to economics. Oak was a cheap material. Most of the very earliest surviving buildings are stone-walled, and in these cases the tree ring dates have been obtained from roof timbers. The oldest in-situ roof to date in Britain is the nave roof at St Mary's Kempley, which has been tree ring dated to between 1128 and 1132. The South Range at Blackfriars in Gloucester has been tree ring dated to between 1230 and 1269. Another particularly early building is the Tithe Barn at Siddington, tree ring dated to between 1245 and 1247. Unusually, this five bay building contains both base crack and aisle cross frames. The chancel roof at the Church of St James in Bristol tree ring dated to between 1327 and 1355, contains the earliest double arched brace roof in the southwest region. When was the peak of timber framing in England? The survival of early buildings before the 1400s is rare. The majority of examples which are visible today are oak and date from between the 1450s and the 1750s. Here in Gloucestershire, it seems to me that the, the period that people will experience if they go around looking at local buildings, they will see buildings from the 16th and 17th centuries. They will see things like the Gatehouse of Ludlow Castle. They will see the New Inn in Gloucester. And these are absolutely, ragingly beautiful buildings. It's hard to say when its high point was. The critical thing is that we need to know more about it because these buildings are durable, they are sustainable, they are um, beautiful and they are artistically and intellectually incredibly satisfying to look at and to live with and to work with. Arguably, the pinnacle of oak timber-framed construction in this country is the very recognisable decorative wall framing with its elaborate herringbone and circular patterns. 
tree ring dating of buildings in the southeast indicates that decorative wall framing was a quite short-lived fashion which occurred during the Elizabethan period, the 1560s to the 1600s. However, tree ring dated examples in the Midlands, mainly in Herefordshire and Shropshire, suggest that this fashion continued through the Jacobean period, the 1600s to the 1640s. One of the aims of the Gloucestershire Dendrochronology project is to help date such changes in styles of carpentry in this country. The most important aspect of our project is just to make people aware that there is survival of medieval buildings. You go to America and you've got nothing standing before what, 1700s. Here we've got the history of building archaeology standing on our doorstep going right back to some of the earliest buildings, you know, we've got 1100, so we're actually getting to almost pre-Norman survival, showing the techniques, showing how people were thinking, showing uh, what materials they were using. And we want to highlight that we've got this resource surviving in this country. What would be ideal for the future is if people actually sort of take photographs, they climb up into their lofts, they take photographs of their roof structures, anything they think might be interesting. Because even the most ordinary um, photograph can be really informative. For example, if you climb into your loft and you take a photograph of a timber and it shows smoke blackened uh, roof timbers, we know that that house had an open hall, we know that house was almost certainly medieval, um, and therefore the house is really important. This is just, you know, gold dust. For the, um, for the archaeological world.